Well, it's good to be able to talk to you today. I'm Pastor Tom Leak from Hope Bible Church, and I was told this might be shown in our worship service as well. So greetings in the name of Christ. Many of you have been asking about my health, my cancer, and how that has affected me and what God is teaching me inwardly. So I'd like to just share a few things with you. I'll call this suffering is the speedway to sanctification. It really can be if you cooperate with what God is doing by bringing pain in, into your life. Well, I've been trying to cooperate, but it's been hard. And I guess that's the first thing that I would share with you in this um, two-part um, video series about suffering. It's just that suffering is real, and it hurts, and it's hard. And we're not to minimize it when we see our brothers and sisters in church going through it. I'm very grateful to be part of a loving church, and I'm grateful that we look after each other and we live in a fallen world. That's one of the things I've been relearning again and again. A fallen world, a broken world, a confusing world, a dirty world, a world where there is disease and death and disappointment and the devil roams about on earth and he seems to get his way a lot. And uh, I struggle with that. I pray to God and it seems many of my prayers come back unanswered, just like you do. And it's hard. And um, I just wanted to share that, that I'm so grateful for my wife, my family, for my church that have kind of held me up, but it really is uh, difficult and uh, hard. Of course, when it's difficult and hard, you have to learn the next lesson, and that is, and everyone would say it, it's a basic lesson, but we have to learn to depend on God. Now, we all say that, don't we? We say, look, I need to learn to depend on God more. He's the one that provides life. He's the one that holds my future in his hands. He has the whole world in his hands. And we sing those things and we know those things. But really, learning to depend on God for everything, when you're in a situation like I am, where you realize the doctors and nurses and those that are doing research really don't have an answer for what you have. Unless God intervenes, you will pass on. So yeah, you're depending on God completely and you're realizing that the levels of dependency on God you had before were not as strong as what he's calling you to do now. And I've had a number of trials in life, and my family has too. But this is harder, and it just draws out that need to have my faith refined. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter makes a big deal about that, um, that God is refining our faith because our faith is so important to God, that we see him and understand him and perceive him to be good. And that though it seems outwardly the things that he's doing are bad, they're not bad. They're for our benefit. He's molding and shaping us. Now, we don't get a daily update from God about exactly what he's doing. And so we're told you have to depend on God. You have to realize that what he's doing in your life is to, is to mold your faith in him and make you tested and make you found to be uh, tried and true so that when Christ appears in the world, you will appear with him and you'll be seen as a believer and you'll be able to greatly rejoice at that time as well. Another lesson, which just goes with that lesson, is to trust in the Lord to work things out, um, including for me, being a pastor of a growing church with a COVID you know, virus, and how do you take care of all of that when people are having different needs, and um, what will happen to the church? How will it develop and grow through the years? Will our leaders be able to handle the challenges that are going to face them? Do they understand all that they need to understand? And the ultimate answer to that is it really doesn't depend on us. We have good men here, and we have solid elders and deacons and good teachers, but really the future is in God's hands, and so we have to trust in the Lord to work all those kinds of things out. You have to do that for your finances. We have to do that for our health. We have to trust the Lord with all our heart, as Proverbs 3 says. Don't lean on our own understanding, which is immediately what we try to do. How do I work this out? Well, I'm going through that as well. What, what is God wanting to do in Hope Bible Church and in our region? And how is he going to accomplish it? And what part do I still have in that? I don't know. And I can't know. So when I'm ready to put my head down on the pillow, the answer is I have to trust in the Lord with all my heart. You know, when Paul got a no answer to his prayer, take this thorn of the flesh away, the response God gave him is, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So I realize that if I'm weak and I get weaker and I hurt and I'm hurting more, and even if you don't understand how much I'm going through and how difficult it is for me, God knows, God understands, and he'll bring it all to fruition in his time. And then the last lesson just is, 
Suffering is never for nothing. That's actually a phrase from Elizabeth Elliot's book. Suffering is never for nothing. Just a fancy way of saying God's got a purpose in your suffering, just he has a purpose in my suffering. Um, you know, God speeds up my sanctification in my suffering, but God works through me to help other people when I suffer. God is even using my suffering, as we learn about in the book of Job, in order to, to uh, make a point in the celestial and spiritual realms in fighting spiritual warfare. So we have no idea what God is doing. He's constantly um, doing things in invisible places, and he's using our lives in order to accomplish that. And so as I think about just little me being here, I realize that God can work his power through my weakness in ways I don't even understand need to be worked out. So these are just some of the lessons that I've been pondering. Um, some days are just terrible days. I, uh, I complain. I am angry. And other days are very worshipful. Um, but I see God working in those areas, and I've been pondering those truths, and I just wanted to pass them on to you.